187. I'm your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is James. Five years. Holy cow. Five years. Also joining us today is Ro. Hello, all you happy people. And also joining us is Kyle. Hey guys,、uh, 55 years. I cannot believe it. What? 55? Oh, sorry, not MLP.、Uh, watched the African Queen last week.、Uh, oh, okay. So yeah, as you guys may have heard, that today is a very special day, October tenth. Today is a very special day because of well, it's Uzumaki Naruto's birthday. Yeah, October tenth. Yeah, yeah. Yay. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but in all seriousness, today is. Uh, MLP's fifth year anniversary. Like this show has been going on for five seasons, and the fandom has lived on for five years now. And you know what? I'm gonna change it up a bit because usually we go through how we are and what not. And you know, I'm gonna go through that, but I'm gonna add something more. So, James, how have you been doing, man? Five years? No, you. No, you, you, we need to talk about that because you say that number very quickly. Like it doesn't have all that much impact, but so much can happen in five years. Like five years ago, I didn't even know any single one of you guys. True, I'm not even done yet, man. Like this is just the introduction. This is just padding. I don't want to. No, no, no. Skip me. You can skip me. I、oh. want to go straight into the discussion. You can skip me. All right, all right. What about you, bro? How have you been doing, man? I can't feel my legs. What? Why? I've been walking around town with my friend all day today. What? Why? How come? It was well, you know, she needed someone to talk to, and I'm the psychiatrist in my circle, so、oh. yeah.、Mm-hmm. And、oh. now my legs are killing me. <laughs>、uh, well, what? what well, at least、do? I had pizza. Oh, that's true. Pizza's good. Hey, man. Also, I bought a huge mouse, Ooh, and it's、really、shiny,、now. and it has two weird buttons on the side that don't do anything. You need to. But it's really shiny. You need to. I have no them, idea.、Man. There's the sensitivity button. There's the shiny LED lights. <laughs> Pretty. And there's these、uh, two buttons. I have no idea what they do. I was thinking of getting a gaming mouse, but do I? Yeah, I was thinking of first getting a gaming mouse, but then I thought to myself, do I really need a thousand buttons? No, no. I want mouse. My, my gaming mouse only has three buttons. In fact, do, do you want a good? Do you do you want gaming, a good gaming、man. mouse? You do, do you want a good gaming mouse? I got one. I don't use it for gaming because I'm not that big of a gamer. It's called Rocket Lua. And it's co- it costs twenty five pounds, and it's awesome. Like seriously, get your hands on it. It's a good, it's a good mouse. I already got this one. It's so big, my hand is like resting on it. If you want another good gaming mouse, try Steel Series. That's what I'm doing now or using. It's not. It's kind of comfortable. It doesn't have that much buttons on it. It has the left click, right click, scroll, third click, and the、uh, sensitivity button, and it works for me. And Kyle, what about you, man? I'm oh, I'm doing fine. Just、uh, I've spent all day in today, so I don't even know what's happening outside. There could be an apocalypse. I wouldn't know us. <laughs> alrighty then, alrighty then. So, like I said from the very beginning, I'm going to change things up for a bit, and I'm going to ask you guys, well, everyone here, the well, how do I put this? Four important questions. So, James, favorite character. <laughs> are you kidding? Are、yeah. we doing this? <laughs> yeah, it's been. Fun- We are actually doing this because、yes. of the five、really? years. Yeah. Well, things haven't changed much. When I started watching the show, I was a massive Rainbow Dash fan, but then season two happened, and I became a Rarity fanboy. So、mm-hmm. Rarity, Rarity man. All right. Rarity is the way to go. Episode. <laughs> Dude, there is like a hundred plus episodes right now. That's a loaded question. I, you know what? With so much things that have happened and all the things that we have been through, I think that not just my favorite episode, but I think the best episode of the, of the entire show is、um, "Slice of Life."、Mm, okay. Like ep- episode one hundred, that episode、uh, stands and represents everything that this TV show and this fandom has achieved in its five years lifespan. Like. Everything has led up to that episode happening, and it's very special. So yes. All right. And how did you become a fan of the show? Ah,、uh, after I lost my job in December twenty five of two thousand and ten. Oof. 
I dropped myself into a big depression. Like, I think biggest than I have ever had. Uh, to say that I was, uh, I was having bad thoughts about it was putting, putting it mildly. I, even though my family was supporting me and everything, I was being too hard on myself. And for like a couple of months, my friend Aran has been suggesting me to watch this TV show titled My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. Because I'm, I have always been a fan of animation and all that. And he said, watch the show. It's really good. And I was always saying, nah, I don't want it. I don't want to watch it. I don't feel like watching it. But then when this whole thing happened, losing my job and everything, I was like, you know what? I think I want to watch the show. I need something silly, something stupid uh, to uh, cloud my brain for a couple of minutes, if if anything, so I can feel better about myself. So I came in expecting silliness and stupidity, and what I ended up getting was the the, the antithesis of the postmodern show. Like, no cynicism, lots of honesty, very forward, very sincere show, and I fell in love with it. Family and friends? What do they think? <laughs> uh, when my family found out, my sister was the only one who was kind of interested on it. Mm. Because she was also a fan of animation, and she started watching when season two happened, when she knew that that John Delancey was in it. <laughs> She's like, "Wait a minute, Q from Star Trek is in this. I need to watch this." <laughs> but my my parents were very much opposed to the idea of me watching ponies. Um, they they didn't like it, and in fact, they were fairly mad at me for watching the show <laughs> because, like, what are you doing watching a TV show for little girls? You you, you are doing this wrong. You know that. So. Uh, when I when I went to Scotland and I came back, things weren't going all that well. Uh, I told them, well, I I am I'm still watching the show, but hey, look, I'm doing pictures for commission and all that. And they're like, wait, what? Mm-hmm. And they're like, yeah, yeah, look. And I'm like, yeah, look at this. So because of the drawings that I was doing, inspired and moved by the fandom, and because the fact that I managed to find a way to support myself, thanks to the support that I found on the fandom, they changed their mind. And they were like, you know what? Maybe this isn't that bad of a show. And after uh, after a while, my mom ended up watching a couple of episodes. They put her the Indiana Jones episode, that, uh, read it and whip, because she's a massive Indiana Jones fan. So I'm like, that's how I'm gonna get her. And she's <laughs> like, yeah, okay, this is, I can see why you like this because this is not for little kids. Like that that that's that's literally Raiders of the Lost Ark in 22 minutes. <laughs> I I see why you like this. Okay, fine. So they're now okay with it. All right. They don't mm-hmm. they don't mind the pony stuff. Alright, cool, cool. And Ro, what about you, man? Favorite character? I'm still torn between Pinkie Pie and Vinyl Scratch. Yes. <laughs> Not uh, sure if we're gonna walk crazy party waifu or drop the bass waifu. <laughs> Everything's a waifu for you, ain't it? Nah, no, that's true. Why am I even choosing both of them? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Let's make a harem. Oh wow. Raw. What? Wrong. This is not the NBA show after dark. That's after 12 p.m. What? Well, uh, the harem is actually a pack of... Oh, wait, that's a pack of zebras. <laughs> what am I doing? Okay, Zakora then. And then this part got censored by Canterlot Hill. Congratulations. Uh, oh, boy. I so, think we might need to have an intervention with Rule at some point, because he's got a waifu problem. <laughs> you know what? I was going to say myself, do not intervene. Let Rod talk about this. No, you cannot be left unsupervised. You need help, bro. <laughs> I'm slightly worried that when I found... <laughs> I'm slightly worried when I finally meet Ro, he's just gonna walk in, and he's just got like 200 waifu and <laughs> like some sort of dictator. <laughs> Wait, don't let him get any, anywhere near close to Steven Universe, he's gonna, oh, he's already in the <laughs> wife. Oh, wow. Uh, anyway, what are my favorite episode, man? Still have not decided. I like them all. Well, I haven't seen the latest season. Partially I've seen season four. Yeah, the last since the ending of season three, I've been kind of like skipping some episodes, some parts. Not been why? paying that much attention. Kind of like slowly drifting away. To, now that why? I think about it, if I why, if I may ask, then you know that thing's gonna cut. But I was doing my thing, and yeah, basically I was been busy with other stuff. Mm. Well, right. I can MLP, but MLP is not the only thing in my life. Sadly, mm. or, right. what? How dare you be a brony and not be ML, not having MLP as the only thing in your life? I'm not a brody, that's what people call me. I mean, I don't mind being one. It sounds like fun. It is fun. But I never call myself that. That's what people proclaim me. I never give myself the title. <laughs> uh, you never give yourself the title. The title gave you. Kind of like that, yeah. So, how do you became, well, quote-unquote, a fan of the show? Well, it all started a really long time ago. 
No, basically, I was just on the internet, bored out of my mind, looking at random YouTube videos. And I was looking up Sparta remixes. Yes, back then, I was crazy about those things. And then I see a yellow pony that was full of shite, screaming on top of his lungs to the beat, like, what did I just witness? Okay, it looks like a little pegasus. She has a face that says that you're about to get punched in the face mm-hmm. real hard. What is this? <laughs> and I look up, it's MLP. Okay, wait, MLP, MLP. Isn't that the thing about the ponies and the girly stuff and stuff? And what is this? This is not what I remember my little pony to be. And I'm like, okay, Lauren Foles took over. This is going to get good. <laughs> All right, all so yeah, right. I was in a closet brony for like maybe, I don't know, two, four months. I kind of lost count of time back then. Mm-hmm. All right. So family and friends? They're okay with me doing anything as long as it's not something that could get me into jail. So yeah, <laughs> they're totally fine. Oh, okay. cool, cool, cool. And Kyle, I, I think we've, with you, it's pretty recent, but you know what? Do heck with it. Favorite <laughs> character, favorite character. Favorite character, uh, well, it still is, I mean, no surprise here, Applejack. I, I, well, never say no to a bit more Applejack in my life. Uh, why? No, no comment? Uh, yeah, you know what, actually, yeah, no comment. I, I don't want to get ruined trouble. <laughs> uh, you know what? I don't know how he'll get in trouble, but I'm just. <laughs> Somehow it's his fault. Somehow it's his fault. Well, no, no, I'm just slightly worried that, like, somewhere in, like, the NBA show credits, so there's, like, a a Google Doc of Rose waifus, and I'm just, like, worried I'm going to flick through it, and, like, number 672 is going to be Applejack. Oh, it's like, oh, for goodness sake. Uh, all right, then. So, Apple, Applejack is a good character. Applejack is a good character. She's awesome. Mm-hmm. Favorite episode? Favorite episode? Uh... It's the tongue twister, so, oh, right, watch me fail and say this. The Super Cider Squeezy 6000 flip The Super Squeezy Cider Squeezy 6000. Uh, that is it, indeed. Yeah, awesome. no, that's, that's, my, that's my particular favourite. Great song. I like the vaudeville element. I thought it was a good episode. And, yeah, I mean, it was certainly the episode, I think, I mean, I'd be, I'd close to really the first and second seasons quite fast when I started watching it. And uh, when I got to that episode, I think that was the one that kind of sold me. Mm, okay. Okay. If I do remember right, um, how did you become a fan? This was pretty interesting, right? It was. I'm I'm slightly worried about how much you might remember of this tale. <laughs> I do remember a bit. It's really interesting. I don't know if you want to retell yeah, it. Yeah, no, I, of course. Of, listen, I'm happy to retell at any point. No, it's no problem. Um, all right. Fast, uh, we'll go back in time a couple of years, back to, oh, it must have been about 2012, late 2012, mm-hmm. and I was volunteering at a local drop-in cafe where I helped out, uh, along with Sugar Dove, who's been on the show a few times as well, you all know her, she's absolutely fantastic, and there was a new girl that came to join our group, um, uh, Alice, um, known in the fandom as Rouge, she's an artist, and those two would constantly talk to each other in uh, one of the side rooms and I always I wanted to speak to this new girl because I actually quite liked her and I was like okay right I'm going to try and speak to her she would only talk about this stupid show and I'd never watched it I had no idea what it was I mean I thought I'm watching my little pony girly show kids show etc 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 you know same sort of thoughts everyone else has and thought right there's no chance of me asking her out or saying anything to her unless I can somehow get in this conversation I know what I'll do I'll go and watch the first two episodes because it's a two-parter. Watch them, come back, see I've talked about, you know, that I've watched them talk about it. Bingo. That plan completely backfired in every single way. <laughs> in every way. Like, I'll, I'll actually break it down, right? Watch two episodes. I have now watched, well, I'm on season four, so that shows you how well that's gone. Mm-hmm. Um, did I get the girl? No. no. <laughs> Not even close. <laughs> Not even remotely Sorry. close. I just realized I'm laughing at your misery, but it's hilarious. It's like the setup for oh, no, a fantastic no, no, no. comedy. That's awesome. <laughs> oh, listen, like, if you can't laugh at my misery, I mean, what's the point, eh? But, uh, oh, no, like, it's all fun. I mean, I'm great friends with her. She's absolutely fantastic. And it's like, but yeah, like, you know, end up becoming a fan of the show. Didn't expect that. Didn't get the girl. I did expect that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and because of that, I've kind of ended up jammed into this fandom as well as a result of, uh, of uh, Sugar Dove and Rouge. <laughs> Well, at least that's an interesting way to get into it. So, family and friends, what do they think? Well, some friends are in the fandom, so obviously they, they quite like it. They're happy to have another one in the herd. Uh, some of my friends don't get it, but, you know, 
but they don't mind, you know. I mean, it's like on the list of things that are strange about me. Frankly, MLP is not up near the top; it's very far down. But then I have to remind some of my friends that they collect Transformers toys yeah. and like you know records and whatever else. It's like yeah, like if, if MLP is is that higher, lower? I don't know. There's probably some equations somewhere. But they don't mind so much. Um, my parents are. They have no problem with it whatsoever. They're trying to get it, like, and they can understand some of the elements, like, oh, you know, uh, making new friends, uh, you know, of oh, just enjoying another program. Once again, they know how weird I am. Frankly, MLP is not that high. But I was having a discussion with uh, my dad the other night at about two a.m. in the morning, where he was asking wow. me about the show and about the the Brony Scott convention I'm going to, and it's like, so tell me about the show. Like, why is it calm with people your age and like and all the rest of it? And it's like. And like, and he at one point he asked me name the characters, and I couldn't actually go through the names without cracking up because it, like he was a bit of crack up. So it's like, and I was actually going for names, going like, which one's the least embarrassing for me to say out loud right now to my dad? Oh, which one? Oh, which Jack, one? Maybe because it's a cider name. Maybe Applejack. I got away with oh. rarity. I yeah. think, yeah, I think waifu territory. That one was going to. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh. Twilight Sparkle, I think we kind of broke down a wee bit. <laughs> Twilight Sparkle nowadays, it 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 just it just reminds you of that movie. It reminds you of the book. Then again, the pony redeemed the words Twilight and Sparkle for uh, many people. So true, yeah. true. But it's like, yeah. So if you want to challenge yourself to, you know, if you're ever feeling a bit down and you don't know how to, you know, get yourself up, just imagine me, red faced, trying not to make Twilight Sparkle sound like a. A- actress in a specialist 1977. <laughs> oh god, no! Oh. Well, that's interesting. Produced by Quentin Tarantino. Uh, well, uh, I'm not sure if anyone wants to hear my story, so I might. Well, no, on. we want to hear it. I Norman, want to so hear it. Me. I want to hear it, man. Come on. Yeah, Norman, uh, oh, here, look, we can take over host duties for a second. Um, so, Norman, what is your favourite pony? Uh, my favourite pony, well, this is an interesting one. Uh, I always go for trees. Favourite main six is going to be Fluttershy. Oh, Fluttershy is just awesome. She caught me in her first appearance, and the last one in season one where she just flips out that caught me out of nowhere one of the sweetest and kindest going a just going crazy uh, who would have thought and favorite background is going to be derpy just derpy because derpy and favorite princess is going to be luna 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 uh, can't have too much of the lunas but i i think i have a new category for that one favorite Equestria Girls, Sunset Shimmer. <laughs> That's new in the list, because why not, right? And what is your favorite episode, man? My favorite has always been Lesson Zero, because of how insane everything is. Like, how everything just breaks down and goes nuts. Like, that's the third episode for Season 2. And everything just breaks down and goes crazy. It's not even a standard show anymore where people just go nuts. But honestly speaking, I, I think there's a new episode that took over that spot. Oh, the one and that released today that we're not going to talk about because holy cow, spoilers all over. I know, I know. Like, um, Crusaders of the Lost Mark, written by Amy Keating Rogers. Like, oh my god, that was just... Mm. You know, we, we we will discuss that episode when we get to it, but, mm-hmm. yeah. But I'm just stating out, like, that has to be one of my favorite episodes for season 5. <laughs> oh, wow. So much, so much awesome. And it's, um, AKR's last, not really. One of the last. The, uh, mm, mm. Yeah, she has two more episodes coming. Yeah, true that. Uh, what else? What's, what's the next question after this? Uh, how did you become a fan of the show, man? Uh, I I I I don't have any interesting stories like you guys. Like oh, no Spartan, Norman. No... Norman, listen. Every you, story you should know is interesting. Dude, dude, we're your friends, and people in here like listening to your voice. Come on. Not really. How did you? Oh, right. sh- <laughs> shut up and talk. <laughs> okay, but well, anyway, um, mine is pretty interesting in terms of I I was on DeviantArt. I was really hardcore in another fandom before. 
drew a lot there and whatnot and follow a few people. I noticed some of my deviants that I follow, they started drawing pony art. Some drew for laughs, some drew for lols and whatnot. And I just saw some of them. And then, okay, this is how things are done. Like, okay, didn't pay in mind. And one day I was on uh, Can I Has Cheeseburgers? Like, uh, Know Your Meme? Yes. Yeah, so I saw the article they had about My Little Pony. And started watching the video. Like, they had a video of what is My Little Pony and how it became popular and whatnot. So, I watched the video and, huh, this is interesting. You know what? Let me try and watch the first two... Let me just try and watch the first episode. You know, because I want to judge it for myself. If it's if it's not good, it's not good. Like, yeah, I, I give it a shot. Watch the first episode until end. And darn, it's to be continued. Okay, need to watch the second one because I can't leave a cliffhanger. <laughs> That's how they got you. That's how they got you. It's the no, cliffhanger. No, no, not yet, not yet, not yet. So, watch the second episode. Hmm, okay. But, okay, this is a two-parter. So, watch the third episode. It might suck. Ah, the third episode is about the gala and whatnot. But, oh my god, they did a Benny Hill reference here. Okay, this is interesting. Let like, carry on. Maybe the fourth one sucks. I mean, maybe the fourth one is bad. So on and so on until I stopped at uh, where the CMCs became Kiss or whatnot. Call of the Cutie. Yeah, I, I stopped at Call of the Cutie because that's the only episode that was aired during the time. So, okay, I stop here. Okay, this is interesting. Let me bookmark this page and when I have the time, I'll take a look at it. A few weeks pass on, didn't really pay attention to it, and watched it. Watched it until I forgot which episode. And, oh my god, I love the show, I love the show, I need to know, where can I see this? Like, oh, wait, EQD? EQD has a list. Okay, let me see. Oh, this thing down. Oh, there's a live stream of it. Oh, follow the stream, follow the stream. Go here, go there, and I was hooked. By the end of season one, I was... Oh god, I I love this show. And I was following it, and by season 2, the start of, yeah, I think the start of season 2, I watched episode 1, episode 2, and then I discovered the Malaysian Brony Society on the Facebook groups, and, well, interacted with them, and they had an event called Art Jam, where artists went to meet people, just, you know, just to hang out. And I wanted to join, but I'm from the south, way down. It's like a 300 kilometer drive up north. So I discussed about, oh, I like to join, but I don't have a place to stay. One person, he said, hey, why don't you stay with me? I said, yeah, why not? Met them, stayed with them. And during the car drive to their place, it got me thinking, Wait, what am I doing? I am in a person that I know from the internet and going to their place, not knowing about them a lot. But what? This is bad advice that I'm giving. Like, no, don't listen to me. But in the end, I had fun. I enjoyed the community. And from that point on, the MBS show was slowly developing to what it is today. It took me long to explain how I became a fan of the show. <laughs> and it was really interesting. Not really. It was. Come on. Norman, don't, don't be so hard on yourself. Well, uh, what can I say? I, I'm i a fan. I, I'm i too big of a fan that I started a podcast. <laughs> exactly. So what made you make that plunge and just making the MBS show? Wow, that's... Hmm... Honestly speaking, I just wanted to do a podcast for the longest time. Usually, I listen to podcasts and thought, hey, podcasting is fun. I know how to edit audio and whatnot. Let's try it out. Um, But at the time, I didn't have any friends to talk to. I didn't have any people, who, like-minded people who enjoy what I like. And, well, never had the chance until Ponies, where I thought, hey, these people I know from the internet, I talk to them on a regular basis, why not try? And if you notice from the first episode till now, there's an evolution of crew members. You have 
this person, you have that person, you have then you have um, Charlie, and well, they're not often on the show, but they're working in the background, so I'm not. But I knew a few people who have moved on to do greater things, and I've discovered you guys, and somehow, one way or another, you guys came around and stuck on this show. <laughs> and now you're stuck, you're stuck with us. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Well, that yes. is a very passive-aggressive say of, way of saying, <laughs> well, I'm stuck with these guys. Well, my other friends moved on to greater things. Hooray! Dude, it's fine, it's fine, but I find it hilarious how you're well-intentioned. Oh, this is so great, I love where I am right now. Came uh, off as, oh, God, I hate my life. Where did I go wrong? <laughs> <laughs> well, to think about it... Um, Da- Daniel, he he is the concert for um, the Friendship Express, and he has big dreams, and he's done it. Like that's awesome on him. Other than that, I I don't know what to say. Like this show, we we started out small, and I think we're still small. We're, we're not big. We're, we're not in the big leagues. We're not. Sm- we're small, but we are not going anywhere. That means yeah. that we are not disappearing, we didn't go in hiatus, and dude, you're not giving yourself enough credit. We are yeah. still here because of you. If you weren't here saying, hey James, do you want to join the recording now? Or, hey James, we have recording with Silver this weekend. Or, hey uh, Kyle, do you want to get in the show? Or, Raw, hey, will you want to record while you're streaming or anything? Or like, Dude, you're like the engine moving all of this. And I know, yeah, I, I know, know. it's difficult. I know it's difficult for you to notice because you're in the center of the storm. But if it wasn't for you, we wouldn't be here. Uh, I, the only reason why this show never stops is because I never want to give up. Never gonna give you up. <laughs> never gonna let you down. Ah, thank you. you. Please know that he's continuing. I already finished. <laughs> Thank Please note that I know all the lyrics to that song and will happily go through the whole thing. Uh, no. Oh, I, Bernie, no. Well, boom, don't I you? apologize. I unironically like Rick Astley. That song was not bad if you don't think about it so much. <laughs> you could have, you could have just said stop there and it would have been enough. Just like, oh, well, you could have oh. liked it. <laughs> I, I, I enjoyed the song too. It's not that bad. It's just because it's overused. That's why people hate it. No, it's because the internet. It's just internet. Yeah, true. Mm-hmm. That's true. Uh, but I, I I know what you mean, guys. But you know, like I said, I just don't want to stop. Stopping for me, this is not an option. There's been times that I feel that I wanted to stop, but some something keeps nagging in me just to say, "Don't stop, never give up, don't never back stop down." Stop me now, having such a good time. Having yep, a you ball. can see that. <laughs> Note that you he continued singing there. <laughs> uh, but hey, this show is fun. Like, can I just ask, are, you, are we actually clear to have these song samples in? <laughs> you sang them. Like, your voice is not copyrighted. The song is, but your voice is not. My voice isn't copyrighted. I'm amazed Diana yes. hasn't done that yet, because I'm pretty sure we could probably make a few quid off it. <laughs> no, don't give ideas. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, like I said, like, I'm just amazed where the show... Be- like, I'm just amazed, like, where the show has been. From its humble beginning from a small podcast to the guests we have. I'm just proud of everyone who came on the show. And just to plug, Amy Larson's book is on Amazon, Penny Royal Academy. Go buy it. Buy his book. <laughs> yes. Do it. <laughs> yes. I just have to do that. But, uh, well, that, there's a last question to that, right? Or should we just head on to the news? Yeah, that was the last question. News time! I vote for news. I vote for news time. Yay. No one wants to hear us talk about what we do. <laughs> uh, but anyway, in the news... <laughs> oh, James, you remember how you hated that? <laughs> Say what again? <laughs> you remember how you hated that, like, blatant segues? I, yeah, I never liked them. Bl- oh, we're doing it again. A blatant segue isn't bad. What you just need is like a little musical cue before you go into it. Like you need to, if you're going to go into the news and you're not going to have a segue, you need to make a bombastic. You need like, you know, like sort of TV news. So you need to go like, and up next. 
fuck the news. <laughs> and then just go straight in. Uh, I'll just take that. I'll just take that. Uh, so in the news, uh, Nightmare Moon. Uh, the European MLP magazine, they have the Nightmare Moon figure. Like, I think we mentioned that in the past. And yeah, it's out. And it's there. It looks nice. It looks like a ginger cookie. Oh, yeah, that's true. I know, I do think that, yeah, it does look like something you would eat out of how to go. As a very, sorry, that's a very Scottish reference, by the way. <laughs> so, <laughs> no problem, man. Like, honestly speaking, I don't know what to say. You I might, you're, 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 mi- you're kind of like mi- misjudging it. Uh, consider this for a moment. Is that here in, in Europe, or at least in, in, in Spain, we, because we, this is the exact same thing that we get in, that we get in my country. Uh, we never ever got the My Little Pony magazine until this year, perhaps end of last year. We never got it. Uh, so we skipped on those cheap plastic guitars and Mm-hmm, Those mm-hmm. stupid musical instruments that they don't work, of course, because they're, they're toys. Uh, we never got any of that, but we started getting this magazine with these figures, and they range from okay to spectacular. Like the, the vinyl scratch, uh, toy that came with one of the That's magazines, good. it looks like a miniature version of the Funko vinyl scratch one. I, I'd say it looks even better because the, the, the glasses are 3D. They, they are part of the toy. They are not painted on. They are actual part yeah. of the, of the figure. Yeah. The, um, the James, the thing with the figure you have and the Funko, I think they're from the same mold, only your plastic figure is made from, well, cheaper material. It is cheaper plastic, it is smaller, and it has a rougher finish, but for, like, what, five, no, four, four, four euros for uh, 95 cents? I think that for that price, and you get a, a silly pony magazine with lots of posters that you can cover your walls on, I think it's worth it. I, I pay for it. I have I have all of the toys. The, we didn't get the Nightmare Moon one yet, but I, I got all of the main yeah, six. I, I'm not saying that. Um, I'm not saying <laughs> I don't that have a problem. You have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying that the book is bad. I'm not saying the magazine is bad. I'm just saying that the Nightmare Moon in this one, it's like what Kyle said. Well, maybe Rose said, like a gingerbread. Like it's just. It looks not a, up to par. It looks uninspired and it looks really dull. When comparing the, uh, to the other toys, it does look a lot more disappointing. Mm. I, mean, I, I don't mind the main, because the main is one of the hardest things to do, because of how Nightmare Moon's main is. And given the budget of what they have, I'm assuming, it's lucky that you guys get what you get. It looks good from a side view, but when you look at from the top down, it's, oh my god, it's just, what have they done? But still, if Ginger you stick bread, a magnet on the side, night, that's what it's, done. It's, it's like one of those fishes that, were like, when you look them from the side, they look huge, but when they you, you look them from the front, they disappear because they are completely oh, yeah, flat. Yeah. That's what happens with this toy in particular. Still, yeah, yeah, still, it does look better than other toys. I mean, it's it, it, it it's a bit derpy, but I think it's better than other toys. Yeah, can you do me a favor, right? Fish, gingerbread, can we start talking about food? Because I'm starving here. <laughs> oh, come on. Uh, <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong, I love gingerbread and I like fish fingers. I, they are absolutely fantastic. But I kid you not, my stomach is rumbling right now like a base stereo. Yeah, come on, get, you, get, a, get, a, get a Twix bar, get some Snickers. Are you hungry? <laughs> you, you should get some Bounty. Come on, it has coconut in it. Oh, wait, uh, you listen, don't like coconut. Uh, listen, <laughs> I, no, I, like... Like, listen, look, I, I maintain... I oh, you like coconut? My... Oh, get a Whenever I go to my... Uh, at my old workplace, before I finished it the other week, I kid you not, um, I used to buy bounty bar- bars from them, right? And they used to go, well, why do you keep going for those ones? And I said, I don't care what anyone says, the coconut counts as one by five a day. <laughs> oh, you. Now I want a bounty. Thanks, all. Oh, oh, it's okay, man. Don't worry. I'm here for James, you. James, you know. why did you do this to me? Because I you love you. Bounty? That's why. Because I don't oh, well. a bounty. I don't have any. If you can call Boba Fett, I got him on speed dial. This is, Boba Fett would be quite nice, uh, actually. Yeah, can you ask Boba Fett to go down to the local shop and get me a bounty? Oh, wow. Well, talking about bounties, Sony is a bounty right now. Oh, yeah, they, they are taking down the friendship, the friendship game reaction videos. Because apparently they own the rights on the music. Well, this is not surprising to me because, well, Sony is cracking down on 
friendship game clips um more specifically the music from the show like um all given second like all 10 of the songs that's on the friendship game soundtrack that you can get on amazon or itunes uh-huh. and maybe probably physical copy i don't think so but yeah you, you can get it there and sony is the one that's publishing or has the rights to the songs which is kind of strange i thought hasbro would have got the copyrights for that but eh, anyway with sony coming down on people with who does reaction or who basically uploaded the song up to youtube this is i don't know what to say what do you guys think man? not surprised not surprised i'm not surprised i'm either. surprised that only they're t- starting to take down those videos now what took them so long yeah, and the thing is as well, like, what they're doing isn't particularly wrong, you know, I mean, it's their, if it's their music, it's fair enough for them to do copyright strikes. However, what they should probably do is, um, do what a lot of people are doing now, which is, um, putting their shows and movies onto YouTube for people to buy and to watch. I reckon they could, you know, if they're going to remove stuff down, they might as well go, oh, look, we've got a market here, let's put our stuff up. Well, Kyle, the thing is, um, with Equestria Games, the soundtrack is online for you to purchase. Like I said, you can get it on Amazon or iTunes hmm. or iTunes. Yeah, but I got it on. Oh iTunes. yeah, well the soundtrack's so, up, but like your yeah, um, those clips are from the show, correct? Mm-hmm. So is the show up on YouTube? Like, like is there like an official download? Not yet. Um, it's going to be out on October 16 for America on DVD format and Blu-ray. And what did you say, James? November 4? In, in Europe, is going to you. You're talking about friendship games. November 2nd. Never At least it. according so, to Amazon. Could, uh, and I don't mm-hmm. truly trust, completely trust Amazon on this. <laughs> but still, you're going to get a copy of it um, legally somehow, some way. So it's not bad in terms of what Sony's doing. Like, is they're just doing their job. It kind of sucks, but hey, they're just doing their job. I mean, it's not the first case of takedowns and copyright claims, man. It's nothing new. Yeah, true that, true that. But it's just depressing if you think about it. Like, the thumbnail art on Equestria Daily is Ponder Reacts Friendship Through the Ages. That's a sound, that's a soundtrack done by um, DHX for Hasbro Studios. And you can see the video, like, Friendship Through the Ages videos on the Hub's official YouTube page. And, well, I think it's just, mm, I don't know what to say. It's just... Mm. On to other thing that's... Mm, Peter New response to Big Mac transgender drama. Uh, oh, I yeah, don't want yeah. to talk about that because I think it speaks on its own. The title says everything. I, I Honestly speaking, like... When this episode came out, people were flipping at it. Like, people were just getting angry at it. Like, uh the whole... Like, it's... Mm, from what I understand, people were angry at Big Mac's character and them not really going in depth to the whole thing, like the whole what you call this. Um, what's the word they're looking for? Like I, they I don't missed know what the point. About. There's no point to be honest. T- technically, it's just a cartoon. Like, That's the point, and they freaking missed it. If I remember correctly, in the first episode, Mac did speak. Okay, the first thing I've heard is that they complained that Macintosh spoke. Okay, one, every phony freaking speaks. He spoke in one of the earliest episodes of The Importance of Family. Okay? He spoke clearly and nicely. No one complained about that. What the heck now, people? Did you just woke up or did the sound just catch up to you or something? I don't know. No, I, I think it's just because of how... Some people are reacting to this because, oh, uh, they didn't really explore the uh, mindset of this and blah, 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 blah. And most of this, like, Tumblr. Oh, no, oh, no Tumblr no, no, is ruining something with their extreme opinions. How new and noble of a concept. Can you tell in my voice the surprise and shock that I'm experiencing from that? The best thing that you I, can I do just... on this subject, to be honest... Is to ignore mm-hmm. it. Uh, yeah, I I just remember that one art you have like on your movie slate, like uh, they live something like that. Was it with the glasses? Yeah, they live. Yeah, everyone is triggered. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Sorry, that was a really funny update. No, but, but still, uh, the, the, the thing is, this is not the first time that a cartoon character did this. Like, if you take a look-see at Bugs Bunny. They constantly oh, cause yeah, dresses, yeah. yes. And the worst part is he tries to seduce Elmer Fudd. Well, he is crazy. That's his whole shtick. He's trying to trick mm. him to, like, survive. I mean, if you were under, mm. like, attack, I mean, under a threat of being, no, like, no. shot or something, wouldn't you put on a dress and try to, like, you know, elude your chai pursuer or whatever, Hunter, to, like, make a clean escape uh, later on while he's, like, <laughs> while, like, you know, getting shy in the corner? <laughs> Seriously, people, totally... turn on your thinkers. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I, I know what you mean. But, James, what's the movie you mentioned to us about this? Like, um... There is a movie titled Some Like It Hot, starring Tony Curtis and Jack Lemmon, in which two guys have to disguise themselves as women to be part of a women's uh, jazz band in order to escape the mafia. It's a 1950s something movie. It's old enough that it also stars Marilyn Monroe in it. And nobody steer anything about anything regarding that movie. You try to release that film... Nowadays, I'm just checking the date, 1959, it has an 8.3 score out of 10 on IMDb, it's con- and it's on the top 250 movies of all time on that website. You try to release this movie nowadays, and it will make so many people as mad about it. But it didn't, uh, well, not say recent, but uh, within our time, weren't, wasn't there a movie about three sorority boys that got kicked out of their sorority and have to disguise themselves as girls to, well, have a home. What was that movie called? I don't, I don't remember. I don't remember either. Yeah, but it's something to do with that kind of situation too. So, it's just for fun. Like, even in MLP, it was taken out of left field. I think Big Mac wanted to impress Apple Bloom and... There it is. I, I think um, I'm going to hold off from seeing a bit more because... Yeah, we're going to talk least, about that when we least, review the yeah. episode. We are not going to talk about it now. Yeah. But yes. Yeah, yeah. but still, this is just silly. And having Peter New talk about it and just just talk about it is just... Uh, I, I think they missed the point. That, that's, that's about it. That's what I said. They missed the point. Mm-hmm. Uh, true. If if Ro noticed the point, then I mean I it's just, simple. Um, There's the sister who sh- social. Ba- Big Mac wanted to help Apple Bloom, and since family is everything for the Apple family, I mean, it's like right there. It's obvious. He, wouldn't you go? What length would you go for your sibling that you love to your to, to, to death? Big mm-hmm. Mac's all about that. Okay. I love that guy. He doesn't care if it's, like, silly or embarrassing to be in public. He's there for a sis, no matter what, to the very frickin' end. Major respect awesome. for the character. Yay. So, uh, Big Mac Waifu? Um, no, he's a man. <laughs> if anything, he's a husbando. <laughs> uh, alrighty then, alrighty then. So, with that, there's the news. There's the news for this week, guys. And, well, five years... Could you still believe this? Five years. Five years. Five years of what? Ponies. It's been five years? <laughs> five years. Yeah, it seems like only yesterday. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, this show has changed my life. Same. Same. Mm-hmm. Well, not exactly the show, but more like James, but yeah. If it wasn't <laughs> him drawing ponies on that live stream one day, and if I didn't show up there, I'd probably still be in a factory crying and ripping my hair <laughs> off. Or my beard. On it. Really? Well, yeah, I quit my job because I was inspired to get back to art because of you. Oh, dude. Dude, no. I told you a million times that I... No, don't do that. I already did it. <laughs> Bad idea. Abort. Man, dude. Abort. <laughs> what? Dude, I'm back from the dead. I am drawing. I am having the time of my life. And I'm earning a coin. And it's all thanks to you. If it wasn't for you... Or brought the inspiration, I would have been somewhere crying myself to sleep. <laughs> Instead, and you're not be playing the games before. Exactly, I wouldn't be where I am. I wouldn't do the things I am doing if it wasn't for that one live stream that I visited. One that one dreadful night. That wasn't <laughs> dreadful, dreadful anymore. Night. After I started visiting, it was dreadful before. But then I went with the live stream. Uh, Everything changed, 
and the world was uh, never the same. Uh, awesome to know, man. Awesome to know. Uh, but anyway, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at the MBS show. Sweetie Bot Will. I have no idea what she's been doing for five years now. It's a mystery to me. Well, she did get replaced. I mean, fixed a couple of times. Uh, true, true, true. And as for me, you can reach me at Norman Sun. So I tweet about toys, food, and whatever tickles my fancy. And tickling my fancy as of now is just more card games. I just love those things. James, what about you, man? Uh, no, you already know who I am and everything. Uh, Fine. If you say so, yeah. bro. Well, you can find me on my Twitter at Relicious underscore Art. I reblog different webcomic, webcomics from awesome webcomic artists and other art. You know, that's the, and you can find me on my Relish, on my DVNR gallery. I'm blabbering again. On my DVNR gallery at Relicious.DVNR.com where you can see my original work. Oh, awesome, awesome. And Kyle, what about you, man? Well, you can find me on uh, Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Kyle McCall. And um, I'm also part of the Helm Bronies uh, with the Creative Vibe Show, where you can find us at facebook.com forward slash Helm Bronies and YouTube at the Helm Bronies channel. The first series is done. So, uh, yeah, we're just preparing for season two for the new year. Yay. I'm expecting the MBS show to be on that. Oh, oh, don't worry. We'll get your plugs in. Don't worry. I'm organizing the deal as we speak. Yeah, we just need to be on that show again, man. Like the NBS show to be there. Well, you know something. There is actually a slot free. Oh, cool. You yeah. guys should message <laughs> Dion. Hmm. <laughs> probably sweetie, but will. But anyway, uh, and also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher Radio, and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on Live dot com. Links are in the show notes. So, I have been Norman Sanzo. I have been James Cork. I am Relicious Rhymes with Delicious. And I've been Kyle McCall. And we'll see you guys with another awesome episode of the NBA show. Probably another five years, hopefully. Amen to that, brother. Oh, God. Let's hope it doesn't take that long for it to appear. Oh, true. Now. I'm just thinking, like, another five years of this, what will we be doing? Like, I just remember Ro asking our guests, well, where do you see yourself in five years? And I'm just wondering, what are we doing? Pony, like, more ponies? Five years? Wow. In five years now, Norman, this show is going to be syndicated. <laughs> oh, wow, I wish. Anyway, bro, take us out. And we'll see you beautiful sons of guns again next time. Bye-bye. Bye. Goodbye. Bye.